What's up, guys? It's MB Boxing. I just finished up watching Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz, and this was a 10 rounder in the cruiserweight division. And this fight was Saturday, August 5th, from the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. And this fight was broadcasted on his own pay per view. And in this fight, Jake Paul went 10 rounds for the first time in his career, defeating Nate Diaz by unanimous decision. So this fight was um, a pretty solid one to watch, a pretty fun one, very entertaining fight in my opinion. Um, it did end the way I did predict. I predicted a Jake Paul unanimous decision somewhere between seven rounds to three, eight rounds to two, and six rounds to four. In the end, I scored this bout 96-93 um, in favor of Jake Paul. I had it a little bit closer than the official judges who had it 98-91 twice and 97-92 once. Um, I thought that, you know, I mean, Nate Diaz did really well in there. I mean, considering he's, uh, almost 40 years old and an MMA fighter, he did much better. I know this is how I played it out. Like I predicted it, um, pretty much exactly how the fight went. Um, not to toot my own horn, but I mean, it was a very solid fight. Diaz came on in some of the later rounds. Um, Jake Paul did primarily a bit better early. But just to break down my scorecard round by round, the first round I gave to Jake Paul, it was a big round for him. Um, he was walking down Nate Diaz early, catching him with a big hook. Primarily the big left hook landed that hurt Nate Diaz, sort of walking him down, landing big shots. A uh, big round for Jake Paul in the first. However, the second round, um, I gave it to Nate Diaz. This was a really, really close round, but I thought Diaz had some very good pressure there. Jake Paul had some decent counters, but I thought Diaz was decent with the pressure. And you know, if... If Nate Diaz had a bit better stand-up with throwing his punches, like the thing with Jake Paul, obviously he's been training boxing only, so he's able to sit down on his punches and throw power, and you could tell there's force behind it. However, Nate Diaz, when he would throw, he'd be landing pitter-patter shots on Jake Paul, but they were still landing. Um, so that's why I did give Nate Diaz four rounds in this fight. But then in the third round, um, I thought that Jake Paul was landing the harder punches uh, I thought that Nate Diaz was just a bit, maybe landing some decent pitter-patter shots, but um, I thought Jake Paul was just the one landing the harder shots. Then in round number four, um, I actually gave this round to Nate Diaz. I thought Diaz did really well with his pressure, was landing some nice short uppercuts on Jake Paul, but it was a pretty close round. Um, then in the fifth round, it was a very big round for where for Jake Paul scoring a knockdown on Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz was going forward with his hands up, trying to close distance, and then he stuck his, I believe it was his lead hand out, left his temple open, and Jake Paul countered with a perfectly placed um, counter hook on the temple of Nate Diaz that, sending him, that sent him crashing towards the ropes. Um, and, uh, yeah, Nate Diaz went down. Then in the sixth round, this was a really, really close round. Um, I ultimately edged it to... Jake Paul. Jake Paul had some very nice counters on the outside, but Nate Diaz also had some decent work going forward, but I edged the round to um, Jake Paul just slightly. Then in round number seven, um, I thought that it was really, really close, but I thought that Nate Diaz was sort of smothering um, Jake Paul a bit and was a bit more active. Like Paul would land some decent shots early, then Diaz would come back um, and land some nice shots as well. And that was the same, in my opinion, for the 8th round. I thought that, I mean, especially the 8th round, um, that was a big round for Nate Diaz. There were two clear rounds that Diaz won, in my opinion. If I can remember, I think it was the 4th and it was the 8th. They were definitely clear. Round 7, uh, 6, and 2, I think were definitely swing rounds. But in the end, that ultimately equates to like 5 rounds that could be given to Diaz. Um, and... There was obviously a knockdown, so really Nate Diaz couldn't have won this fight either way. Um, so round eight was a big round for Diaz going forward, pressing Jake Paul. Then rounds nine and ten, specifically round ten was a big round for Jake Paul. Round nine, Jake Paul was just landing the better shots on the outside. Round ten was the round that Nate Diaz could have um, won, you know, could have done more, but he just didn't. He was taunting Jake Paul a lot. Jake Paul just took advantage of that, didn't fall into his games, and won the round pretty easily. So in the end, that equates to a 96-93 scorecard for Jake Paul in this one. Um, and this goes in the question, what is next for him? He's now 7-1 and one as a pro. And, um, I mean, yeah, for Jake Paul, obviously he's going to be fighting all these like high-profile fights. And that doesn't mean against high-level guys or anything like that. 
Um, he's obviously face, facing these other social media guys, these other YouTubers, UFC fighters and whatnot. Um, and obviously now we're going to have, in this sort of YouTube boxing circle, we're going to have Tommy Fury take on the other YouTuber, KSI, in a fight soon. And I'm pretty sure Tommy Fury is going to win that one pretty easily because I think Tommy, I think KSI is significantly worse than both um, Jake Paul and Tommy Fury. So I think that uh, Tommy Fury will get the victory there and we we'll, we'll, might be able to see a rematch between Tommy Fury and Jake Paul somewhere in 2024 maybe, maybe early 2023, who knows, maybe mid-2020, or excuse me, mid-2024, somewhere around there we could see it. But, I mean, if Jake Paul doesn't fight um, the winner of that, he could face another UFC fighter, uh, like retired veteran, something like that. Um, but as for Nate Diaz, in the boxing ring, I think he's done unless he's going to have another big fight against like a YouTuber or other like celebrity type. But otherwise, um, yeah, and I think I, in one of his, um, at the press conferences, he, he was asked a question if he's going to continue in MMA, and he said, yeah, so we're definitely going to probably see him back in the octagon um, soon, or probably in the next year or two, but... I mean, yeah, I don't really think he's going to be in the boxing ring again unless a big offer is brought to him. Uh, so overall, Jake Paul defeats Nate Diaz by unanimous decision, improving his boxing record to 7-1. and one. Whilst in the boxing ring, Nate Diaz falls to 0-1. Oh and, and yeah, that's really it. I'm MB, I'm MB Boxing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.